Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Whether you're here in person or online, thank you for joining us. My name's Mike, and I'll be continuing tonight on our series on John. I'll be speaking out of chapter 14, which is a little bit out of order of what's been happening for the last few weeks. But I was a bit crook when it was supposed to be delivered a few weeks ago. And I'm still a bit croaky, so I apologise if I start coughing into the microphone. But before we go any further, let's pray. Father God, we come here tonight to open up our hearts and our minds and hear what you have to say to us. We come here to humble ourselves and we pray that you speak to us through your spirit. You open our eyes to see you, to see you as you see yourself, Father. And we pray that you can teach us through that. You can move in us and change us so that we can be reflections of you to everyone in the world around us, wherever we go. We pray that whatever has uh, attacked us through the week, whatever is stressing us out, whatever is frustrating us or hurting us, that in this time you can move your spirit within us and grant us peace, that we can spend this time focusing on nothing but you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever had regular contact with somebody that you've never met face to face? Maybe through work, maybe there's someone you speak to regularly in your job who lives interstate. Perhaps you've chatted to them about non-work stuff. You've learned about their family, their local weather, traffic conditions, what their boss is like to work for. You may well have built a friendship with this person, despite the distance. Maybe it's somebody you met over the internet, playing video games or just chatting about a shared hobby. Maybe somebody you corresponded with was a pen pal. Does anybody here know what a pen pal is or had one? I can see the older people putting their hands up. <laughs> Younger people are like, huh? Have you ever, after months or years of chatting, finally met this person face to face? Did it shock you? Did it destroy your mental image of them and alter how you thought of them? Maybe you thought they were young and they turned out to be old. Maybe you thought they were skinny and they turned out to be a bit large. Maybe you thought they sounded really straight-laced and you expected clean-shaven, business suit and tie, neat and normal, but then they're super alternative with tats and piercings and brightly coloured hair and odd clothes. I want to ask you tonight, do you have a mental image of what God looks like? Is he an old Santa-looking guy in a toga? Is he a Middle Ages king wearing a suit of armour and with a halo visibly sitting on his head? Is he a Jewish rabbi? Is he something a bit more out there, like a pillar of flame and cloud? I'm going to give you an answer to this question, but first let's read our passage for tonight. Now for context, Jesus has just told his disciples, hey, I'm going to be killed. He's just told Peter, you're going to deny me. The disciples, understandably, are feeling a bit worried right about now. John, I'm not sure that I put the right passage number up there. Oh, well. John 14, 1 to 11. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have not have told you that I... Sorry, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord... We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Typical Thomas. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. 
Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anybody who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you now, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. So what does God the Father look like? There are some people in the world today that like to draw a picture of God as a cruel, unforgiving, judgmental tyrant, reveling in the punishment, smiting the heathens and laughing. Some others like to depict him as a bit of a doting grandfather. He likes to spoil his grandchildren, never really disciplines or restricts them. But our passage here tells us God looks like Jesus. I know you're probably thinking that's not particularly helpful. You can't exactly go to Jesus' Facebook page and pull up a photo of him from the weekend. And if you Google it, which one of these are we supposed to be thinking of? It's easy to miss the point here. Jesus is not talking about his earthly body, his earthly looks. He isn't telling us to Look at his physical face with all his godly genetics on display. Jeremiah 17.10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. And then on 1 Samuel 16.7 says, The Lord does not look at the things the people look at. People look at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart and tests the mind. So in order to see God, we first have to be able to see the the way that God sees. We have to be able to look past this skin and see into people's hearts. Unfortunately, unlike God, we can't just look straight into a person's mind, read their thoughts, know exactly where they're at. So we have to see people through their works. We have to see Jesus through his works, not just his miracles and his acts of power, but through his character, through the ways he interacted with people and treated them. And quite happily for me, the Gospels have plenty to show about Jesus' character, so I don't feel like I'm lost at all on this. By reading those Gospels, by seeing Jesus' character, we can in turn see what God the Father looks like. So let's go through that. Jesus looks like power. You've heard of his miracles, turning water into wine, feeding the 5,000, healing the sick, raising the dead. Jesus looks like mercy. He saved the adulterous woman from being stoned to death. He forgave the sins of the paralytic man. He healed many who were brought before him. Jesus looks like faith. He regularly took time to pray and commune with his Father, and he obeyed the Father, even to the point of suffering a thoroughly humiliating death. Jesus looks like courage. So many times he was ridiculed. He was accused by the people of being a drunkard and a glutton. He was threatened. There were many plots made to kill him, but he kept on preaching in God's name. Jesus looks like sacrifice. He died on the cross so that we may live. What else stands out from the examples we've already listed? Truth, compassion, righteousness. The Bible very clearly tells us what Jesus looks like. And so also, we know what God the Father looks like. He is powerful. 
merciful, faithful, courageous, sacrificial, sacrificing. He's truthful, compassionate, and he's righteous. Verse 7 from our passage. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. So we know now what God looks like. But what does that mean for us? Well, there's two ways that we can apply this. Firstly, this picture of God should reassure you. The disciples were worried about Jesus' impending death and what that would mean for them. And this is how Jesus chose to reassure them. Their world was shaking. It looked like everything was about to fall to pieces. So Jesus basically says to them, Guys, it's okay. My Father is in control. He is powerful. He is merciful. He is compassionate. He is all these things that I have shown you. He will make sure that you are all taken care of. And so we take comfort from this picture. Whenever we are burdened with guilt and doubt, whenever we don't know what to do next, whenever we feel lost, whenever the road in front of us looks dangerous and uncertain, remember, God, this merciful, powerful, loving, compassionate God is in control. He sees you. He knows you. He hears you. And if you listen, he will talk to you. He will guide you through wind and waves He will calm the storm around you. You can trust him. I want to emphasize that in all situations, you can trust God to love you and to help you if you let him. This foundational truth of what God looks like, of who he is, it's the only safe bedrock that we have to build our lives on. It's the only safe bank that we have to invest our souls in. It's the only fortress that we can safely take rest in. So take comfort in it. Celebrate it. In a world that feels, I don't know about you, but for me, increasingly hopeless, looking at wars and famines and floods and all sorts of horrible things that I read about in the news each morning, I know that I have a hope in God that will never disappoint me. And that's available to all of us. I mentioned a few moments back, there are two applications to seeing God. And the second one of those is a challenge. If I stand side by side with my earthly dad, who's not here tonight, but some of you know him, you can see the resemblance between us. We look fairly similar. And if I hold my lovely little daughter close, who I think was carried out crying a few moments ago, um, you can see the resemblance that she bears to me as well. If we look like our earthly fathers, shouldn't we also look like our heavenly father? Is there anything in the qualities of God that we have listed that is beyond us? No. You might say something like, well, we obviously can't have God's power. But you remember the last verse of that passage? Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Power, mercy, faith, courage, sacrifice, truth, compassion, righteousness. Can anybody stand up and tell me that any of these things are out of reach to the children of God? You and I, And anybody who has salvation should be a walking facsimile of these qualities of the Father. There should be a holy resemblance between God and his children. In Matthew 5.14-15, to Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everybody in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. When the world looks at us as Christians, what they should be seeing 
is a reflection of God. We need to show the world at all times that God is our Father and we are his faithful children. We should enjoy the blessing of hope and the, the, the accurate image of God gives us we also have to shoulder up to the responsibility of living it. Not just talking about it, living it. I know it's easier than it's said than done. The devil is always here, sitting on my shoulder, whispering in my ear, trying to obscure my vision of God, convince me to just blend into the background of the sinful world. But that's not what God expects of me. It's not what God asks of any of us. So let's take a few minutes to just think and honestly ask ourselves some questions. If you look into a mirror, do you see the qualities of God there? Can others see God in you? What can you change to make sure they can? I'm just going to give you a minute to dwell on that. When I look at those questions, I can honestly say to the first, some of them, not as many as I'd like, not as often as I like for others seeing God in me. And I know that there's a lot that can be changed. I suspect that a lot of you feel the same way. And the best path to that change is to go to God, speak to him, confess where you've fallen short on those things and pray openly and honestly that God will come into you and change your heart. What about your mental image of God? If it's anything I said tonight reassured you or has it worried you? Is it shaken up what, what you had in your mind? Another question that I'm going to leave you with. Am I working to change myself so that I look more like God? Or am I trying to change God to make him more, more like me? Unfortunately, I correspond with a lot of people who I feel fall into the second category. And it's very sad. There are, the Bible tells us there are a lot of people who God will turn away. He'll say, I never knew you. Let's not be one of them.